Well, if you all have your Bibles uh, this evening, if you would turn to uh, John chapter 6, um, and just thinking about this before I preach tonight, I remember um, when I was a young boy in uh, past the pirate club, and I, re I remember one time going up to my teacher and, you know, asking the teacher a lesson, and I, I would say at that time, I wasn't sure, you know, about the call of God upon my life to be, you know, a pastor and to, and to preach, um, but uh, uh, she told me that, you know, I wouldn't be able to, and I remember growing up, um, you know, like being in church, not really having opportunities you know, to preach and uh, to share uh, share the message that God has laid upon my heart uh, to others, like in a, in a church service. But I'm thankful that the Lord has given me opportunities to preach and share God's word uh, with others. And even if you're not up here in front of a pulpit, you know, we can all share God's truth with others. And I hope we all do that. If the Lord teaches you something, I pray that you would share that uh, with others. But with just thinking about that, you know, I, I really didn't think, you know, God would uh, call me to preach, you know, just uh, not really having many opportunities to preach. And honestly, I was not the best public speaker uh, when I first started out. I, I didn't have very many opportunities uh, to do public speaking or really preach in front of people. So it's just, you know, amazing when you see the work of God upon your life and how he shapes you and how he grows you to be more like him. And when God has called you to something, he, he's not going to just leave you and he, he's going to help you through it and he's going to help you to be more uh, like him. And with thinking about, you know, the start of this year, I pray that that's each of our desire, you know, to be molded, to be more like Christ. And uh, just thinking about two weeks ago when I was uh, preaching from the book of Psalms and how I, I was saying that the Lord needs to teach us. He needs, we need to be willing to be taught of the Lord. And I'm preaching from a familiar passage tonight. Uh, many of you have heard this before from John chapter 6, especially if you have been to the Thursday night Bible studies. And so uh, just by way of remembrance, do any of you remember the theme of John chapter 6? You can shout it out So. What is it, Titus? Well, <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to preach tonight. But what is, do you know the major theme of John chapter 6? I'll, I'll just say it. <laughs> Jesus is the bread of life. Now you guys will probably be like, oh, I knew that. But, you know, th this is the emphasis uh, that God has upon his word and upon uh, John chapter 6 tonight. But, I'm going to begin reading in John chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples. And the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise to the fishes, as much as they would. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for your word and, and uh, just uh, what you've shown me uh, this year. And I pray that you would help us all. Uh, to tell others the truth that we find in your word. And I pray that you would help me as I preach tonight, that you would just give me the words to say, and that I would just seek the honor and please you tonight. And I pray that you would bless this service in Jesus' name. Amen. So many of you probably grew up uh, listening to this story. It's, it, it's a very uh, familiar one about uh, Jesus with the five loaves and, and the two uh, small fish. Uh, but I pray that, you know, we won't just, 
you know, gloss over this or just, you know, uh, be like, I've heard this before. There's nothing new that I can learn from this. And I believe that when you go back into God's word, and it's happened to me before, and I'm sure many of you as well, you're like, I've read this before, but then the Lord points something out to you, and you're like, why did I not learn that before? And, you know, the Lord teaches us uh, new things. And I'm so glad that the Bible is alive and it's fresh. And there's always something new uh, to get from the Word of God. But as we start off this evening, we find in this passage, uh, there was this great multitude. And uh, there there's some other references. Uh, actually, this account is, is recorded in all four of the Gospels in uh, John chapter 6, Matthew 14, uh, Mark chapter 6, and Luke chapter 9. So if you want to do some more study and look into that, I, I think it would be a great help in getting the full story of, of what is uh, taking place here. But uh, the disciples and Jesus, you know, they, they were working. They were, they were busy. And, you know, Jesus wanted to go to the other side so they could get a little bit of rest. And this multitude, because, you know, they saw all these great miracles, they wanted to be around Jesus. Now, it wasn't exactly for the right reason, but they wanted to be around Jesus. And, you know, they, they beat uh, the disciples to the other side and were already there, ready and waiting uh, for Jesus. And I think uh, a wonderful thing is how you see Jesus' reaction to this. You know, if you have a long day at work, and then something else comes up, how do we normally respond? Like, come on, like, there's more work to be done. And I, and I wonder the disciples' thoughts through this. They're like, you know, we're trying to get some rest. You know, we haven't even eaten. And I know a lot of us, when we haven't eaten, we get hangry. And we all, you know, face that physical struggle. But I love, you know, the response of Jesus. If, if you look at uh, the other passages of scriptures, it says that when he saw the multitude, he had compassion on them. And I believe this is in uh, Mark uh, chapter 6 and verse 34, if you would like to turn there real quick. And it says, and it says, and Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion towards them because they were as a sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. And see, Jesus saw that there was a great need. Not, not only was there a great need to fill these people physically uh, with food, they had an even greater need to believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And, and that's what Jesus was trying to get them to realize. Um, and I'm sure if you all have read uh, John chapter 6, you learn that Jesus is telling them how he is the bread of life. And and you see the people are kind of like really confused. They're like, what, what is he talking about? And uh, later we learn that many of them went away because they wanted Jesus as the king to overthrow the Romans, which uh, it says that in verse uh, 15 of this passage is that's what they wanted to do. They wanted an earthly king, but Jesus had come to be the savior of the world. And that's what he was getting them uh, trying to get them to realize. But we see that there was a great need. And, and you know, Jesus looked upon these people uh, with compassion. And when we look around the world uh, that we live in today, we realize that there's a great need, isn't there? There's a great need of the gospel. You know, I was talking with uh, my friend Jeff the other day. Uh, just, you know, he, he's in Athens, Ohio. And just the difference Pickerington and Athens is, and I was telling him, I'm like, there's many churches here. You know, you don't really have to go far, I, I think, to find a church. Now, to find a good church, you might have to travel a little bit. And, you know, to find a church that's preaching the truth, that's preaching the gospel, might be hard to find. And I was telling him, you know, how we have many churches, but it seems like so many people don't really know the truth. Um, as many of you know, we have a Teens for Christ here at, at Pickerington North. And it, it just, I, I guess it really shouldn't amaze me, but a lot of times it does. Because I'm, I'm teaching simple truths from the Bible. And I'm trying to ask these kids questions. And it just seems like they don't know the answers to it. Because a lot of our churches are lacking in truth. And they're not preaching it how God has commanded us uh, to preach his word. And, and there's a great need. But many times when we see that great need, 
You know, we get, we get overwhelmed, don't we? We're like, can, can I do all of this? And, and the reality of it is, no, we can't, we can't do it on our own. But we need to realize that there is a need. There is a great need to be done. And that doesn't just mean, well, you know, so many people need to be saved and, you know, there's, there's so much that I need to help with. So I'm just going to, you know, give up because there's too much to be done. No, that's, that's not how it is. It, we see that Jesus, when he saw this great crowd, you know, he didn't, he didn't just get overwhelmed or said, you know, I, I'm too tired. You know, I've, I've done already many miracles for you guys today and I've taught you guys already. You know, j- just give me some rest and, and, you know, leave me alone. No, he, he didn't say that. It says that he looked on them with compassion as a sheep having no shepherd. And when you go around Columbus, when you go around Pickerington, I wonder how do we view, view people? Do we view them with, without a savior, without Christ? Or do we just pass by them without giving much thought? You know, I'm, I'm convicted many times when I go to the gas station or the grocery store or wherever I may be when there's a big crowd. And so many times in my own life, it's like, what am I doing? What am I doing for Christ? Am I sharing the gospel with them? Sometimes, you know, in this life, we get so busy saying, you know, we we got one goal, you know, to get our groceries and get out of the store because I don't like crowds. But maybe you're in there for another reason as well. Maybe God has someone for you to meet. But I wonder, are we ready to help people? Because many people are searching for the truth. But are we willing to give the answer uh, to them? So that's the first point tonight. There, there was a great need. And we see in our society today that there is a great need. And secondly, we see the, the doubts of the disciples in uh, John chapter 6 and verse 7. Uh, it says, actually, I'll begin reading in, in verse 5. It says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. And one, one of his disciples, Andrew Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are these among so many? And I, I believe that many times when we look at the disciples' lives, uh, and, and I get this way too, I'm like, how, how could they be you know, uh, so, so doubtful? How could they not have so much faith after seeing Jesus in, in the flesh and, and seeing all the miracles that he had already done? And, but we have to think of ourselves as well. Like, How many things has Christ done in our lives, yet when something else comes up, you know, we doubt him? And, and like I was mentioning with the other point, there there is a great need. And, and so, so many times we doubt that the Lord is going to meet that need and that the Lord is going to help us to give out the gospel. You know, if, if God commands us in his word to spread the gospel, do we not think that the Lord is going to help us? It would kind of be foolish for God to say, you know, go preach the gospel. But while you go preach the gospel, I'm not going to be there with you. No, that, that's not what he said. Jesus is with us always. If you are a Christian, if you have placed your faith and trust in him, Jesus is with you. Jesus can give you that strength and that courage to tell someone else about Christ. And I, I know myself so many times, you know, we, we get so bashful or so shy. We think about what are these people going to say unto us? But, you know, really we should be thinking of where are these people going to spend eternity? And, and, and not doubt that God will give us help because God is willing to help us uh, to share the gospel with others. But we see what Philip answered him. He answered truthfully. He said 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them. He said, you know, th- this amount of money, if we were going to go out and buy all this bread, it's like we wouldn't be able to feed these people. And I believe Jesus was trying to get Philip and the other disciples to realize that on their own, you know, they couldn't meet these people's needs. Not on their own. And I, and I wrote uh, by my Bible, uh, by this verse, I put the insufficiency of man. We have to see that we need the Lord. We need God every day in our lives. It's not just, you know, once you're saved, then, then you're good. No, we need to 
every day rely on God. And, and I know many times in our lives, uh, when, when the going is good and, and life is great, it, it seems to be easy to rely on him. But, you know, when, when our ship is tossed and, you know, when, when troubles come, we start to doubt him a little bit. And, and like I was saying, the, these disciples, they, they had seen many of the miracles that Jesus had done, yet they still doubted him. And, but they did realize that, especially Philip, he, he's like, you know, no matter uh, if we have 200 penny worth of bread, it, it, it's not enough for these people. There, there must be something more uh, that can be done. And we also see in verse 8, it says, One of his disciples, Andrew Simon, Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are these among so many? You know, the, this lad, he, he just brought uh, five loaves and, and two small fish. And, and he says, you know, what, what can be done with this? You know, it, it's just a little bit. What, what can be done with this? Like, can, can, any be, can anything be done with just such a small amount? And we see the third point, uh, kind of getting into this a little bit already, the gift of the lad. We see that there, there was a boy there. He wasn't mentioned. And, you know, several times in the Bible, there are people mentioned who we don't know the name of. Like, uh, uh, it says that this lad here, we, we don't know his name. We don't know who he was. But he was willing to give of his lunch uh, to Jesus. And, and I was kind of thinking about, you know, what, what were the thoughts here? Was, uh, was the lad just saying, you know, here, you, you could use this for, you know, uh, everybody. Or was he just saying, well, as long as the master gets to eat, that's all I'm, you know, concerned about. You know, there, there's several different thoughts. You, you can think about this. But no matter what his thoughts were, he was willing to give up his lunch. He, he could have ate that himself, you know, and he could have been full. He could have been satisfied. And there could have been so many others who wouldn't be. Or, you know, that he, if he didn't give of his lunch to Jesus, would he have a part of this blessing that Jesus was about to do? But I'm amazed at, you know, just uh, the people who are willing, even though they're not Mentioned by name in the Bible, there, there's people who are willing uh, to give their all unto Jesus. They, uh, just thinking of this lad here, you know, we, we may think, well, he wasn't anything special, but he, he was willing to give all for Christ. And I wonder tonight, are we willing to give all to Christ? Uh, with the start of this year, you know, everybody makes, you know, re what resolutions and, you know, changes that they need to make. And I pray that each one of us will realize that there's a change that we need to make in our lives to be more like Christ and to give ourselves more unto him. You know, all of us face this difficulty of, of holding back from Christ, don't we? But I pray that each and every one of us will say, you know, I want to give my all to Christ. You know, because when it's all said and done, you know, all that's going to matter is what you did for the Lord. Not what you did, uh, you know, who made the most money, who had the nicest car or, or everything like this. And yes, we have to supply for our needs. We understand that. But the most important thing that can be done in this life is what we did for the Lord. And, the, you know, really there's no greater time uh, to give the gospel out than now. You know, there's more people today. There's more people who are lost today than, than there were last year. And there's a work to be done. And just because, you know, there, there's a great need. We, we all recognize that. We, we see the great need. But we don't need to become so overwhelmed with that that we're not willing to move the action. There must be something done because if, if we don't give the gospel out, if we don't spread the word of God, who's going to tell your neighbor? Who's going to tell the person you met at the grocery store? Who, who's going to tell your friend or family member who hasn't accepted Christ? And God has given us the responsibility. He has given us people in our lives. You, you can probably think of them right now. People in your life who need the gospel. 
And I pray that each and every one of us would make a decision here tonight that we're willing to give our all unto the Lord. And, you know, the, the miracle of, of what Jesus was about to do, you know, it wasn't the, the focus was not on the lad. It wasn't, you know, focus on the doubts. And it wasn't even focus on how great a need there was. Jesus was trying to bring the focus to himself, saying, you know, I can meet their needs. And we, we see in verse, uh, in verse 10, it says, And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed it to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. And then verse 12 says, When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing uh, be lost. And we see, fourthly, the miracle of the Master. And, you know, it, 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 our focus shouldn't just be on the miracle, but our focus should be on the Lord. And, and that's what he's trying to get them to see. And I told you earlier that I wrote uh, in my Bible, The Insufficiency of Man. And then in verse 11, I put all, the all-sufficiency of God and how that God is able to meet our every need. And when we think about, you know, this world, it, it's easy to get discouraged when you see all this sin. It just seems like it's ramping up, doesn't it? It just seems like people are just getting more and more sinful and further and further away from Christ. But I think, I think the Lord, that he has more power than what man has. And we see that, that they needed to rely on Jesus to supply their needs. And just as they needed to rely on Jesus to supply their needs, we need to rely on Jesus every day. Um, you know, everything in life uh, should point us to Christ. Every, everything uh, that we do in life should point others to Christ. And, and I really hope and pray that we're all you know, seeking to live a life that is pleasing uh, unto the Lord. It, it, it's so easy to get mundane in our Christian life, isn't it? You know, we, we've heard, you know, a lot of the same things. You know, I need to read God's word. I need to pray. But I pray that you're not mundane with that. I, I pray that you're truly seeking to meet with the Lord each and every day. You know, I um, wrote, wrote a post the other day uh, just because... When, when I think about people, when they said, you know, when they say, I met with God today, doesn't it sometimes seem like people only say that like it's a one-time thing or, you know, uh, uh, not, not very often. And I, I wonder, why is that? It's because, and, and I believe really it's because we're not meeting with the Lord. You know, we're not spending time in his word like we ought. We're not sharing the gospel like we should. And, you know, many of us, we do share the gospel with others. We do, we do go out and we do tell others about Christ. But, you know, even if you do, there's still more to be done. It, there, there's not a time to quit and say, um, you know, I, I've give, given the gospel to my neighbors and, you know, I, I'm just going to relax a little bit. You know, Jesus and his disciples, they, they could have relaxed and you know, let all these people pass by. And say, you know, you, you guys, uh, you know, you have a great need. Why don't, why don't you go into the town and, you know, find the sufficiency that you need for yourselves? And, you know, a lot of churches and a lot of Christians are doing that. Not, um, instead of pointing them to the truth of the gospel and the truth of Christ that he can meet their every needs, many of them are pointing them to all other things but Christ. And I pray that the way that we live our life will not point people away from Christ, but will point people to Christ. And I, I would just like to encourage you uh, tonight that God can do great things. And I hope and pray, especially with the start of this year, that you're praying that God does greater things in your life than he did last year. And not saying that he didn't do great things in your life last year, but the Christian life, you're always advancing. You know, there's always new things that take place in your life. We're always growing to become more like Christ. And, and I pray that you're, you're expecting God to do great things in your life and with you. God is willing to use you if you are willing to be used of the Lord.
Let's pray. Dear Lord, I thank you uh, for this evening. I thank you for this message uh, from your word. And I just pray that you would help us to yield ourselves unto you and that we would be looking daily uh, to please you and to serve you uh, with our lives. If we would all please stand with our heads bowed and, and our eyes closed. And maybe you don't have to come to the altar tonight, but maybe there's a decision uh, you need to make in your life. Uh, Maybe you can think of someone uh, that has never trusted Christ as their Savior. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a friend. And you, you would like to pray for him tonight. And I pray that you would take this time to truly pray for uh, those who are lost. And, and think of those who are without Christ. It, it's so easy uh, to pass people by and to forget their need of Christ. But I pray, Lord, that you would help each and every one of us uh, to tell others about Christ. And maybe you're here this evening, and maybe you have never trusted in Christ as your Savior. And I pray that if you are here this evening and and you're unsure of your salvation, if you're unsure where you would spend eternity, I pray that you would come to this altar and get it settled here tonight. You know, there's several people here in this church who can show you from God's word, how you can know for sure you're on your way to heaven. And maybe tonight as well, there, there's something that needs to be done. Maybe you need to take another step forward in your life for Christ. And, and like the Christian life is always advancing, I pray that we would always be growing in our Christian life. Maybe maybe you would say, say that this evening and say, Brother John, pray for me. I pray that I would grow. If you would just slip up your hand, I would like to pray for you. See those hands. Thank you, Lord. That, And I pray that uh, you would just help us to continue in our Christian lives to be more like you.